now we're actually going to create um, a true 3D form uh, using uh, terracotta clay and a lot of sculpting tools. So we're going to create a sculpture, a smaller scale sculpture of our model, Steve. I've always loved sculpture. I loved artists like Michelangelo, Donatello, and all the way up into the 20th century. I love any good three-dimensional image. But I find it's also very helpful in my two-dimensional efforts to give a better sense, a better understanding of how to create that illusion of three dimensions. And I like this terracotta also because it's so soft and easily you can move it around. It's like paint when you sl you know slide it around the canvas in the first part of a, a picture. So you can see the clay that's been worked, you know, so there is some force, some direction to the way the surface has been shaped and areas where it hasn't. I don't like too much of that because I can't figure anything out about what's happening when clay is is noisy like this. So I like to just take the scraper and go right across it. Now what I'm going to do is just create two sockets in there and even if I want to like a little glabella which is that down plane. So just push that in there. Out of you know everything I've done so far I've looked at Steve maybe two or three times. It's just a generic very generic head and I like to make sure that I create something of a shadow, like okay, cast a shadow. And just like in drawing, shadow, less of a shadow. That gives some variation across the surface. Artists will usually take all those little hairs, consolidate them into masses, basically blocks, and fuss with their edges in order to give them some feeling that, they, that it is hair. It's a very hard line. So I'll take some of that lid and just, just like in a contour line, you don't want everything the same. Deeper here, less deep. In other spots, it makes it more realistic. Across the forms. So I might start along the form and then just go across and that helps bring out the dimension. Just like in drawing. There's something about terracotta that, you know, when you treat it this way, it takes on this, uh, it's like this magic surface. It starts beginning to look like skin. And I love that in sculpture. When artists like a Bernini, or those 19th century sculptors like a Carpo, or others can transform materials into something that looks completely different than the materials they're using. They can transform marble into flesh. It's this is a great three-dimensional alchemy. And this is the tragus. And I'm going to push, take that tragus and push it out. And it needs a little bit more meat to it. There. Drop that in. Very often it will just catch a little bit of light. Angle that. This gets its name. from the goat's chin because it tends to be little hairs that come out right there. The hat's nice and firm so I can just, it's like carving into marble and even uh, all those little um, towel fibers, the, the, the movement of the towel fibers going across the form, I can sort of go across those and Gives it a skin-like quality. There is our terracotta sketch of Steve, and Steve, thanks a lot.